Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and today I'll be discussing the idea of a genetic takeover. A.G. Cairn Smith, that's this guy, has proposed a mechanism by which evolution may produce dramatic and rapid changes in the genetic substrate of organisms. His theory illuminates one aspect of how today's high-technology mechanisms of heredity are likely to have evolved. The idea is perhaps best explained by a diagram. Here, G1 is the primary genetic substrate and G2 is the secondary one. Arrows within the organism, running from genotype to phenotype, indicate paths of genetic expression. A simple organism with genetic substrate G1 initially produces substance G2 as a component of its metabolic process. G2 is inherited and it eventually comes to carry heritable information. Gradually, G2 completely displaces G1 as the primary genetic material for the organism. Before this mechanism was clearly elucidated, it was widely believed that the principle of genetic continuity would rule out many types of dramatic changes to the genotype. It seemed that any modification would require the old genotype to still be readable by the new genetic machinery in order to maintain a continuous line of descent of viable organisms. Consequently, it seemed as though primitive genetic materials would be related to modern genetic ones in such a way that the two could be linked by a series of gradual changes. The mechanism of genetic takeover allows for the possibility that a secondary genetic material can arise not as a modification of the primary one, but rather from molecules synthesised under its control. The general idea of a takeover is actually ubiquitous in evolution. The many discontinuities in the fossil record are co caused by invasions, where organisms are displaced by other organisms that have evolved elsewhere. We can see similar events going on today in New Zealand and Australia. The possibility of genetic takeovers allows for extremely dramatic changes in the genotype without violating pure Darwinian gradualism. It consequently provides a mechanism which allows much greater freedom when considering the possible candidates for the role of the very first genetic substrate. This resulting liberation allowed Cairn Smith to propose that the first living organisms were in fact extremely different in their construction from the type of organism we are now familiar with. In fact, he proposed that our ultimate ancestors were actually clay mineral crystals. Now, regardless of whether his theory of crystalline ancestry is correct, it still seems highly likely that multiple genetic takeovers were involved in the origin of today's genetic machinery. A genetic takeover provides a clear scenario in which an organism contains more than one type of heritable material. Initially, the second genetic material is not critical to the organism and may thus be subject to variation and natural selection without changes necessarily resulting in a non-viable organism. A cursory look at the diagram suggests that there is no obvious mechanism which allows for information to be transferred between the two genetic substrates. The second substrate has to start from scratch in coming to describe the organism. A sceptic might argue that this is just as difficult as the secondary genetic material arising from scratch out of inorganic matter. However, this is not the case. The second substrate can be a thermodynamically unlikely object whose very existence would be implausible in the absence of an existing evolutionary process and natural selection. So, the first genetic material can play a vitally important role in the production of its successor. In much the same way that a spaceship travelling into space requires a booster rocket in order to get it out of the atmosphere, so early life required a boost in order to get it off the ground in the first place. This is because the modern genetic mechanisms are too sophisticated to plausibly form under prebiotic conditions. In the same way the spaceship discards its booster rocket as dead weight once it has been utilised, so the initial genetic machinery appears to have been completely discarded now that a superior, high-technology alternative has been developed. While an immediate form of translation, from the language of the primary genetic material to the language of the secondary one, need not exist, it is still possible for a significant quantity of information to be transmitted across the divide between them. Essentially, the primary genome provides the environment in which the secondary genome evolves. Since the components in the original phenotype are replaced gradually, there is likely to be a functional relationship between the original components and their replacements, since the elements are replaced one at a time. It is important to emphasise the fact that there can be ways to transfer genetic information from the old genetic material into the new one, even if there is no specific apparatus that can read from the old medium and write to the new one. The idea that the new life is necessarily the mortal enemy of its ancestors is not necessarily correct. 
in a real sense, some of the heritable information of the ancestors can survive in their descendants. Genes lie at the heart of modern organisms, and a change to its genetic substrate is one of the most dramatic events that can happen to a lineage. We do not know exactly how many genetic takeovers there were, but it seems likely that there were several, and that they were critical milestones on the road to modern organisms. Despite the pivotal nature of genetic takeovers, their significance does not appear to be recognised by most modern literature on the subject. Consider this book, for example. Um, it makes no mention of genetic takeovers at all, except for in the last three sentences which read, We are today in the midst of yet another major transition to a society in which information is stored and transmitted electronically. It is impossible to foresee where this latest transition will lead, but the emergence of computer viruses may be a straw in the wind. We must beware that we are not replaced by a new kind of self-replicating entity. So, no mention of genetic takeovers except for that, which suggests that no takeover might happen, which hardly seems very realistic to me. Um, anyway, the idea of a genetic takeover is currently a topical one, since the first genetic takeover for three billion years appears to be in progress. There have not been any significant changes to the genetic substrate for a very long time. However, there are currently a number of indications that a genetic takeover is imminent. An examination of the communication of high-fidelity information between organisms and their descendants reveals that almost all the information transmitted over the history of life on Earth has been stored in nucleic acids. However, very recently, various new methods of transmitting information to descendants have arisen. These have the high fidelity of replication necessary to be able to support evolutionary processes and are capable of transmitting large volumes of information, and this information persists via a copying process and is inherited from one generation to the next. Until human beings came on the scene, such cultural transmission of information existed, but it was much more limited. For example, a bird's offspring may have inherited the songs of its parents, but probably only a small number of generations needed to pass before it was not possible to identify the parents from the songs of their descendants. By contrast, humans have brought with them the written word, and more recently books, CDs, DVDs, and other optical, electromagnetic, and electronic storage media. The result is a large volume of heritable high-fidelity information which is not transmitted through nucleic acids. The ultimate effect of these new types of information storage media on biological evolution seems likely to be extremely far-reaching. The possibility of a modern genetic takeover has previously been pointed out by Richard Dawkins and Hans Moravec. I discussed the possibility of a modern takeover in more detail elsewhere in my video essay, Mimetic Takeover. It appears that genetic takeovers are a fundamental, though currently little understood, aspect of the process of evolution. The fact that takeovers near the start of life are very distant from us has obscured their significance as evolutionary events. Whenever evolution develops a new and superior information storage device, there will be an immediate pressure for genetic information to migrate into that medium. This process will continue for as long as superior information storage technologies exist. The information storage aspect of the medium will probably become increasingly abstracted from the replication mechanism and from the phenotypic expression of the information it carries, so in the future upgrades to the materials that carry heritable information seem likely to be relatively painless. In the light of the fact that we may now be facing the first genetic takeover for several billion years, some interest in the mechanisms behind them would appear to be appropriate. Um, enjoy!